Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today we are taking a look at the Colbert, what is the newest legendary ship to be released to the game, though it does have a bit of a twist. We're going to go over how to get it, our commander build, the modules, the consumables, and then we'll show off a game in it. So if that sounds good, make sure you stick around. So first things first, Colbert is a bit of a unique legendary ship in the way that you have to go about getting it. It is currently only available for the current update, the three year anniversary update, it is in the shop uh, for steel. It is a bureau project that must be started with steel. If you purchase it, then it will be in your bureau like any other bureau project that you can start and end at any point. But for this one, it's going to cost 3000 steel. We can talk about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but just know only available this update 3,000 steel. That's how you take a hold of it. So uh, beyond that, let's move on in to the command. Now, a lot of people will say Andre Rue is the way to go. And I understand because Colbert is somewhat of a fragile ship and you want to be agile. You want to be open water gunboating. That's the way this ship uh, is best played. But I'm here to say Andre Lemonnier is the way to go on this one, or at least for me, he's the one who I had much more success in. I had middling games when playing with Rue. Uh, Lemonnier is the one where once I had him, I was starting to get very consistent good games. So he's the one who I've built with his base trait. It's gonna reduce the detectability time of your cruiser after firing, i.e. it's gonna take a percentage off that 20 seconds you have to wait after firing. Then the skills we are running are Burn It Down XXL, Igniter, Punch Through, Steer Clear, and Fully Packed. Then we are running Nikolai Kuznetsov and Norman Scott as our two inspiration. So a full non-premium build right here, which is kind of a rarity at these upper tiers. So that's always good to see. Basically, the whole thought behind this is, well, we only have tiny 127 millimeter guns. Fire chance is king. We don't want to go too far just because uh, we don't want to get too floaty on the gun. So we want Kuznetsov to get the, the shells a little bit further range and then we want Norman Scott in order to tighten up the grouping just so that we have a higher hit chance and then the double fires to set more fires and then we're running steer clear just to get that little bit of bonus agility because this ship does very much rely on its agility despite what you're going to think when you hear about its armor. As far as mod slots go, this one is also probably gonna be a bit different than you've heard it recommended. In that first slot, we're running aiming system mod one. I don't think there's any reason to run any other one. In the second mod slot, I'm running propulsion mod two. I think a lot of people are gonna recommend steering gears, but this ship starts and stops like molasses. If you're playing it at range, being able to, to accelerate and de decelerate by, by juking is going to be uh, very useful and I think it's it you can you know fully build into the rudder but my recommendation is propulsion mod then in the second mod slot we are running steering gears mod three and then finally we are running that main battery mod two I think you could make an argument for gun control system to get that five percent extra range but even then uh, with Kuznetsov we're getting enough bonus range out of the vessel where I don't think a uh, gunfire control system mod two makes really any sort of sense. Finally, let's go ahead and take a look at those consumables. The first one is gonna be that bog standard damage control party. So damage control party, it's gonna last for five seconds. It's gonna reload in 58.8 seconds. Then we have a choice between sonar and defensive AA. I'm gonna to continue to run sonar. Sonar is infinitely more useful than defensive AA. You're, you're gonna detect ships at 4.4 kilometers, torpedoes at 3.1, it's gonna last 96 seconds, reload in 176.4 seconds and get three charges of it. Then we have the engine boost, it is the special French engine boost that boosts the speed of the vessel by 20%. The uh, consumable duration is gonna be 180 seconds, gonna reload in 117.6 seconds and you're gonna get three charges of it. And then finally, you have the repair party, one of the weakest heals uh, at the tier for cruisers, 180 health per second, 28 second duration, giving you a reload time of 78.4, uh, reload time 78.4 seconds, and you're gonna get four charges of it. It is, like I said, the weakest heal at the tier. So with all that said, let's now just start to dive on into the stats. HP of the vessel, 36,100, the lowest of any legendary tier cruiser. 
Armor thickness is between 10 and 80 millimeters, but really we're gonna dig into that armor view because it's very important for you to see. This thing is coated in 32 millimeters of armor, but I promise you it's lying to you. Uh, you will get slapped. Uh, just because this ship, if you look, is so flat that whenever a shell hits, it's not really at a very good angle, usually, unless it's right on that bow. Uh, it Most shells, most large shells, find a way to penetrate. Uh, and I would only say the 32 millimeters of armor only is really effective at the closer ranges, just because once you get out at those long, longer ranges, the shells tend to lob in. So even though you have 32 millimeters of armor, which usually would allow you to bounce uh, 16 inch shells, it's just not going to happen in this ship. And this ship uh, is incredibly prone to going kabloom, uh, just out of, out, of, out of nowhere. Torpedo reduction on the ship is gonna be at 10%. Going back to those heals, it's gonna heal 5,040 per heal, which is gonna give you a potential total maximum health or what you could get with both the ship health, ship health and if you use every single heal perfectly of 56,260. Moving on to the star, it's those main batteries, eight two-barreled 127 millimeter guns with a firing range of 16.3 kilometers. Real time is gonna be 3.1 seconds, giving you a shells per minute of 300 and 10. This thing goes daka daka like nothing else in the game. Re uh, 180 time on the on those guns, 6.9 6 seconds. HE, you're gonna do 2100 damage, giving you a DPM of 651,000, which is absolutely monstrous with a 12% chance to set fire with our current build. AP damage is 2808, which if you can find a reason to use the AP, will absolutely melt people because that's a DPM of 870,480, which is absolutely insane. Now, you're not gonna be doing that kind of damage, but there is absolutely the potential to chip away at some people's health. Uh, the ship does not have any torpedoes. It does not have any secondary argument. So let's move on to the anti-aircraft armament. AA range is only 5.2 kilometers, being on the lower side of the tier five cruisers. AA minimum damage is only 126 at that 5.2 kilometers, and it only goes up to 381, making it the worst of any legendary cruiser. Max speed of the vessel, 34 knots. Remember that you can boost that up with that, with that engine boost up to about 40 knots. And if you are building into speed, you can push that even further. Turning radius on the ship is gonna be 620 meters with a rudder shift time of 5.2 seconds. Detected lead by sea is going to be 12.9 kilometers. Detected lead by air, 8.1 kilometers. And detectability while firing in smoke is going to be 6.4 kilometers. So with all that said, let's go ahead and dive on into a game and we can kind of go ahead and talk through the rest of this ship. So welcome to Northern Waters with the Cold Bear. We spawn over on Seaside and well, it's time to find ourselves a nice island to try to start picking off whatever is coming our way. We don't know who, what is exactly on the other team quite yet, or at least what is spawned on our side. We do know there's a couple of Minotaurs on the other side, which is kind of the anti Colbert, just because of how powerful and how well those shells penetrate Colbert. Uh, they, they are one of the more feared thing you need to take a look at when you are in this ship. But anyways, we have ourselves a destroyer on our side. We're gonna go ahead, kind of come up behind this island right here, wait for our destroyer to get some spots in, and then we can kind of decide what we wanna do, whether we wanna start open water gunboating or taking advantage of this relatively low island. And uh, well, there's a Minotaur, which as we said before, not exactly our favorite thing to see. Now, one of the strengths of Colbert is its ability to lob shells. It is essentially a French Atlanta. I don't know what an Atlanta is doing in this match. Yes, we do have a wider matchmaking constraint right now because of tier six, but a four space matchmaking we should not have. Anyways, Atlanta is sailing broadside. We'll see if we can get a couple of rounds into him. Uh, we can see we're also getting a contested look right here. We're waiting on the spots to come back. We do get a couple of good hits on what we assume to be Atlanta. Of course, Colbert, because of its long lobbed shots do have a substantial flight time that you will need to master if you are 
if you are using the Colbert. Uh, it, 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 it is just one of the things that does require a little bit of extra skill and understanding what you need to do, especially when you're at the longer ranges. If you're coming up against a Colbert, make sure you're maneuvering because if you maneuver enough, uh, the Colbert most likely will not be able to hit you. Anyways, Minotaur pops up right here. And as we talked about earlier, Minotaur is kind of our our fatal enemy. He's, he's a very solid counter to us. As you can see, we're just slightly giving him angle here. And he's able, when he lands his shots, to take some pretty good chunks out of us. And he can do that really quickly, given his fire rate. So we want to concentrate down on Minotaur. Our AP doesn't really have the ability to punch through when he's somewhat angled like he is. Thankfully, our, our destroyer lays out a smoke screen for us right here. We're going to take advantage of that. Slide on in. Our smoke firing penalty is only five kilometers. Fletcher gets spotted. We'll go ahead and help gun down this Fletcher. We can remove one of the two uh, destroyers on the enemy team. We're going to set ourselves up for some good success. We end up taking out, out Fletcher right there. We pop our first heal. Uh, of course, we don't, have a, we don't heal a ton of health back, but... Uh, given that the Minotaur wasn't hitting Citadels, we are able to uh, recover a ton of that health right there. Anyways, Minotaur is nearly down. We switch, flip back over to AP because we know it's Atlanta and Minotaur are our two. We are getting spotted on uh, radar, which is an interesting thing, which tells us uh, Atlanta's probably popping his radar at the moment because we've seen that Minotaur drop smoke. He's not running a radar build. It would be interesting if he is. You rarely see that out there. But as Atlanta backs up here, we're going to flip over to the AP, and you're going to be able to get a taste of what that AP can do. Uh, you know, it is it is nasty. It it, it is just going <laughs> to just kind of eliminate him. And, well, that's our flank secured as uh, our, our battleship was able to take out the Minotaur. We're going to go ahead and secure C. Then as we examine the map, probably head up to B, and then try to use that one base island that has a good lobbing position as cover to help engage and cover our current teammates. Or at least that is the plan we're going to start off with right here. Of course, all plans don't always go 100% to plan, but this is this is the, the kind of thing that's forming in our head right now. We get the capture. We go ahead, put full, full throttle. Uh, we, we want to take advantage of as long as we have that engine boost. Uh, to get us over to B and try to get us into position to be able to start engaging people because right now uh, our 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 team's you know D element our team's left hand side flank has very much collapsed down into a couple of squares, uh, which means they're very much going to have to rely on us I guess in order to win this match. So uh, the only way we're going to win this match is by points. So we're going to go ahead. Try to get B, that way we get an advantage in those points. Right now, while the ships are almost even, uh, and the now the points are being even, we want to be able to start boosting up our current lead in the standing. So we move over to B. As we do that, let's go ahead and talk about Colbert. As we as we said, uh, Le Monnier is who we are running. You can absolutely run Rue. That is the, like, the agile style of build. Uh, I, I find that that Agile style uh, does a couple of things that are not my favorite. The first thing it does is, is it does very much force you to be an open water gunboat. And if you make a mistake, you are just gone in Colbert. Or you're losing 75% of your health. It is Colbert is a, a knife edge ship. Uh, especially when played at range, which is how you would want to play it if you are going with that full Agile build. Uh, the other kind of suggestion is, well, build Colbert for range. The problem is the floaty shells. You're you're going to spend most of your time at that super long range, and you're not going to be able to hit much because, well, you're lobbing shells way further than you should be, and the, the velocity on the shells just isn't high enough for you to be able to hit shots consistently. Because if the target maneuvers any amount in the... 15 to 20 second flight time uh it just isn't it just isn't worth it so uh, as you can see we're firing away at the minotaur and the fletcher here and we haven't really hit anything now did they return fire back no so no harm no foul we're now going to try to take up this position because well the enemy team has very much uh in danger or has very much eliminated the majority of, of our team 
who is down in that corner. Uh, Minotaur starting to throw some shells our way, and you can see just how much damage we take on a sing singular Minotaur Salvo. Now, what Colbert is very strong against is battleships. It absolutely melts battleships because of that fire chance and just how many shells are in the air at any one moment. As you can see, we're gonna try to get this, this Massachusetts set alight right here. We have this beautiful island that we can now use as cover. We get the first fire, uh, and then we are looking for a place to get that second fire. I think he insta puts out that first fire, which means uh, in either 20 to 30 seconds, we can set another fire that will be a permanent fire and it will tick down some massive damage for him. Now he may be running will to rebuild so that Odin could end up keeping him alive. We do need to keep our eye on that because we need at least two fires to be able to whittle him down if he gets within will to rebuild range. We get one fire right there, but Odin starts to push in and we're gonna try to support our 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 only destroyer here. We we don't want him going down, so we flip on over to the Odin, see if we can get some damage over time on him. We can see the damage over time ticking on the Massachusetts, which is exactly what we want. Uh, he's starting to tick down fairly well, uh, but we do need to try to help out our Friesland over there, because of course he doesn't have any torpedoes. He, he doesn't have a... Uh, a, a real defense against this Odin here. So we need to kind of step it up, try to help him out here, be ready, flip over to AP if he gives us enough broadside for us to engage in the AP. But until then, we just want to set the fires. And as you can see, we're still relatively close to this island, but we are able to lob the shells over him even when the Odin is starting to kind of encroach in our space. That's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get f a far, since the Odin is pushing into us at every time he put every meter he gets closer it's going to shallow up that angle that we fire over massachusetts barely survives the fire i think the minotaur is going over to will to rebuild him we're like okay if we can spot the, the the massachusetts maybe we can get a fire on him finish him off but odin right here uh having a ton of fires on him looks like he's probably gonna go down right here which is exactly what we want and well uh we pull up the high caliber right there uh Odin goes dark because he's in the smoke, but we get the arsonist on him. Massachusetts start to recover the health from earlier, which means we need to very much handle it. The game is all tied up at the moment, or not really all tied up, but ship-wise, it is tied up, and we are back to an even amount on the cap. So it's really probably going to come down to who can kill who. Massachusetts is in range. If we can engage him, he's going. that's who we are going to want to engage. We do try to, to get out in front of our teammate right here. We may end up causing him to take a couple more shells. We get a fire on the Massachusetts. He instantly puts it out, which is fine. We know he's now cycled his damage con, which means we can target him and he'll have a perma fire. If we can, if we can engage him, if we can get another fire on him. We should be able to knock him out because that Minotaur is no longer in will to rebuild range, which is exactly what we are looking for. So we're gonna try to get some fires on this Massachusetts as we sail out and around, try to find a different angle that we can engage because we don't want to push out to that Minotaur quite yet. Uh, his shells are a little bit better than ours as far as flight time goes, and I don't want to give him uh, the ability to melt us, though now this Fletcher pops out, he takes out our, uh, our, our destroyer, but thankfully our destroyer is able to tie it up and take out that Fletcher with shells that are in the air. Veneto pops his smoke, which I'm absolutely fine with. We're gonna go ahead and pop our heel. We're gonna have one remaining uh, as we get into this final engagement. Top off our health as much as we can because we know we are going to need it to engage this Minotaur. Uh, we, we want, while we take this health, we want to be able to spot for our teammate. Uh, pushing this direction is cutting off the angles that Massachusetts can be. So, so now me and the battleship are, me and the battleship both have lines of fight, sight and fire on the Minotaur. Minotaur starts to push into us, which is exactly what we want because we're shortening that flight time, make, giving us a little bit more of an advantage right here. Uh, and our HE is going to be able to handle him uh, very nicely. Uh, if we can if we can land the shells, like I said, shells do tend to be quite floaty. Uh, he He's turning left, right, and center. Thankfully, we are able to take him out. Now it's us on the Massachusetts and you're gonna be able to see what you can do with the armor on the Colbert, because uh, it, when you're at long range, the Colbert armor just isn't there because of how flat everything is. Now that we're below that kind of eight kilometer range, 
the the shells from like a Massachusetts are going to fly very straight. They're going to fly straight into that 32 millimeters of armor, uh, or at least straight into our bow and not down and angle in. So we are going to be able to, to somewhat protect ourselves. You see, we can still take quite a few hits there just because of how flat the majority of, of Colbert is, but the armor is working very well there. We are able to melt him down, and well, that is the match. And in the round with, I think, just shy of 3,000 X experience, um, overall quite good. As far as what I think of the Colbert, I think it's an excellent boat. I think it's a ship you're going to have to learn to use. I think it's going to be a very powerful boat. It's going to be the Achakov of, of the legendary tier. And if that sounds appealing to you, go pick it up. If it doesn't, you may still want to pick it up because who knows if you'll ever be able to grab it again. Guys, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.